Amen. Good to see everyone here tonight. You know, Bishop could have kept going if the Lord had led him. I wouldn't have cared. But it's not about me. It's about, about the Lord. Um, I'd like to give honor to the Lord tonight to, for being here and let me to stand behind the sacred desk tonight and give honor to the, the Bishop and First Lady tonight for for this honor to stand behind here that the, he has enough faith and trust in me to, to surrender his pulpit unto me. Not everyone will do that. Uh, not everyone needs to be up here, but I have found favor with the, with the Lord and with the Bishop for that. And I'd like to give honor to the uh, kings and priests that's here tonight that uh, has came out on this cold night to, to hear the word and to, to be in the house of the Lord. There is a lot of people sitting at home tonight that could have been, been out, but it's just too cold. Summertime comes around, it's too hot. <laughs> Fall of the year, it's the temperature is just right to get out and, and, and go sightseeing and see the, the, the leaves change. But one day we're going to stand behind in front of a, 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 a God that's going to judge us. And where are we going to be at? I'm going to open in a, a word of prayer. Then we're going to um, go to Joshua, the first chapter, the eighth verse. I'll be uh, starting there. And we're going to be talking about meditating on the Lord tonight. Our most dear and kind Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before your throne tonight, Lord. Thank you for this other chance to be in thy house tonight, Lord. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, for everyone that, that seemed fit to come this way tonight, Lord. That, uh, uh, Lord, you have ordained to be here tonight, Lord. That, uh, uh, Lord, that we'll uh, uh, just hear what the word has to say, Lord. That we will uh, uh, be obedient, Lord. We'll uh, uh, turn an ear to you, Lord. You said uh, uh, that, that to the, the, the ones that has the ear, ear, let them hear what I say of the Lord, Lord. Now, Lord, right now, Lord, is, uh, uh, Lord, take this vessel, Lord, let me decrease and you increase, Lord. Uh, uh, this is about you, not about me. Uh, uh, it's not about the bishop, Lord. This is all about you tonight, Lord. And, Lord, just uh, accomplish tonight, Lord, what you have set forth to do, Lord. Lord, meet every need here tonight, Lord. And, Lord, we just thank you and we praise you, Lord, for everything that you're going to accomplish, Lord. We ask all this in thy precious name. And amen. You know... We meditate on a lot of things in life. We meditate on our job, uh, especially if we're an entrepreneur, we go home, we, 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 we talk about our job, we think about our job, we, uh, it, it, what's getting ready to happen, what's already happening, and making plans, and we have to order material. We, we, we do all that, we meditate on our job. We do, we do that even if, if you're working for somebody, you think about your job when you go home. When you meet somebody, when I, when I met my wife, if I wasn't with her, I was thinking about her. Waiting till I could be with her again and see her beautiful face and just hear her voice. And I still do that now. 28 years later, I can't wait the church gets over. I don't want it over. I want to get home to see my wife and hear her voice. When we have kids and they go to school, we can't wait for them to get home so we can be with our kids and hug them and love on them. All right. When you like to fish, you meditate, well, I wonder if the fish is biting today. I wonder, I wonder if I went fishing, I wonder what bait I'd have to use. And we get, you get out there on the riverbank and you're thinking about fishing. Well, uh, man, if I switch from this, this bait to this bait, will it do any better? But how much time do we meditate on the Lord? How much time do we seek his face? How many times do we just go in a room, shut the door, leave our phone on the outside of the door, and just sit in there and say, now, Lord, this is our time. You know, when you're married, a lot of couples, they have date nights, where that night is just you and your, your spouse. That's all that matters. You think somebody's taking care of the kids, everything's taking care of the house, you just go out and do what you want to for a while. You forget everything. But do we love the Lord enough to have a date night with Him? Do we love Him enough to say, Honey, I love you, but right now, I'm leaving you alone for a while. I'm going to go in here 
get in my prayer closet and spend some, spend some time with the Lord? Or are we too busy watching football? Are we too busy watching TV? Are we too busy on our phone to spend time with the Lord? We meditate on everything else, but we don't have time to meditate on Him. <coughs> we'll make an excuse. Well, Lord, I've got to get this done. Then I'll spend time with you. Lord, i got to get the dishes done. You know how I am. If the kitchen's a mess, I'm a disaster. Well, be a disaster for a little while for the Lord and say, you know what, honey, if you want the kitchen cleaned up, you do it. I'm going to go talk to the Lord for a while. When you get meditating on the Lord, you ain't going to worry about those dishes. The Lord's going to, to kind of block that out. Say, Lord, take everything from me and let my mind be fastened upon you. When you're driving down the road, pay, you're paying attention, but yet you're still meditating on the Lord. When you're sitting at the doctor's office, you're sitting there, I wish the doctor would hurry up. Instead of washing the doctor up, spend some time with the Lord. We can talk and think about everything else in the, under the sun, but we don't have time to meditate on the Lord. Joshua, the first chapter, the eighth verse, this book of, of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. What's that saying? Well, when we're meditating upon the Lord, and we're doing it for the right reason, not doing it for what we're going to get out of it. When I meditate upon the Lord, I want one thing out of it. I just want to be with Him. When I, when the, when I was dating my wife, and I went over to see her, I didn't want anything. I just wanted to sit there and talk to her and be in her presence and hear her sweet voice. But you know what? When we go to, the, go to prayer, we come up here and kneel down in prayer. Lord, give me, give me, give me, give me, do, 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 and we're done. Instead of coming up here and saying, Lord, I just come up here to tell you I love you. And I am so appreciative of what you have done for me. I thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for so many times you have been there for me. The things you have brought me through. And Lord, there's no way I could ever repay you. But Lord, I'm here to thank you. Now, Lord, I'm going to shut my mouth. And you tell me what you want me to know. Lord, you talk to me now. In a relationship, one person can't do all the talking. But when it comes to the Lord, we try to do all the talking. We try to tell him everything. And then when we're done, instead of taking time out to hear what he wants to say to us in our meditation, we get up and leave. He's standing there. And this is my opinion. He's sitting there going, what happened? You love me, but I never get to talk to you. And when I do talk to you, you ignore me. A relationship don't last that long. When me and my wife started dating, if I did that to her or she did that to me, I wouldn't be married now. It wouldn't last. It's a two-way street. It should be more coming, out, coming in than going out. It's so nice to go to the Lord and say, Lord, it's all I got to say to you. You know what I need? You know what's in my heart. Now, what you got to say. When you do that, it is a... Now, I like that attitude. Now, you just sit there and be quiet for a few minutes. Get your mind on me. And I'm going to tell you a few things. He's smiling down. He goes, he him. Johnny really does love me. He doesn't come in here with a, with a grocery list and a to-do list. And then he's done. He wants to hear what I've got to say to him. He wants to, to hear my small, still voice speaking to him because he loves me. 
and he will make time for me. But we're always too busy to make time for the Lord. We're always too busy to say, you know what? I don't care. Let Ohio State be playing. I don't care. I'm going to spend it with. i to spend that game with the Lord. I don't care how how good the fish is biting today. I'm not going to the riverbank. I'm going to my prayer closet. And then he says, "Now that's my child. That is somebody that's after my heart." But we don't do that. We want to to, to make it short and sweet and get it over with. But it says, the, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. When you start meditating on him, no matter what you're going through, it's going to be so much easier. When you're meditating upon the Lord, when the enemy comes in, he's not going to be able to attack you so strong because your mind's not on the things of the world. Your mind is upon the Lord. Your mind is, you got him on your mind. You're not worrying about the, uh, that bill that's coming due because you know the Lord's going to take care of it. But when you're not meditating upon him, uh, you're just saying you got the, uh, 24 hours to pay that electric bill or we're going to turn it off. And you're med not meditating on the Lord. One thing you're meditating on is, ah, I'm going to get the money. How am I going to get this money? Uh, you're calling everybody up and saying, can I borrow money? Instead of saying, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to get the money. But you said in your word, you're going to give me my every need. And Lord, for the next 24 hours, it's your problem, not mine. But I know before that truck pulls in here to turn my power off, that bill will be paid. Because you cannot lie. And I love you. You love me. And you know that I put my trust in you. We can meditate, med, med, meditate upon him and pray or we're in trouble. But let everything be going good. And what do we do? We put him on the back burner for a little while. But that's when we really need to be meditating on him just as much as when things is going south. When everything is going good, be praising him for what he's done for you. And for, Lord, you have blessed me above and beyond what I ever thought you, could, you would do. Now, Lord, I want to bless somebody else. You bless me, now let me bless them. And when you say that, you really mean it. He will, he, he will give you the ones to bless. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. How are we going to know what is written in the Word if we're not meditating upon the Lord and we're not meditating upon the Word, being in the Word, reading it, and studying it? When you're meditating upon it, you're, 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 you're focused on what's being said. You're focused upon what you're reading. But so many times we're not focused. For thou shalt, thou shalt make thy ways prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Yes, I want to prosper in everything I do naturally, but more than that, I want to prosper in the Lord. I want the Lord to look down and say, you know what? I've given him these gifts, and he's been good at using them and giving me the glory. Now I'm gonna give him these gifts. I gave him this anointing, and he's using it the way he should be. I'm gonna give him this fresh, this another anointing. That's where I want to prosper it at. That's where I want to have my good success at, is in the Lord. Because, you know, one day, my job, my money, my house, my car, and everything is going to do me no good. Only thing that's going to do me good is what I have done for the Lord. And when I meditate upon Him, and I say, Lord, let Thy will be done, not my will. Lord, I want to serve you above and beyond what I thought I could do. When we come in here and the service starts at 6 o'clock, 5.30, we're on our faces on this altar seeking him for the service. And the Lord said, yeah, they love me. When we go home tonight 
instead of sitting down grabbing us a, a, a cold Mountain Dew, propping our feet up and turn the TV on and relaxing and watch the TV till two o'clock in the morning. We sit and doing that, we go in, we change, get into something comfortable and we hit our knees and say, Lord, I know I'm, I just came out of your presence, but that's not enough. Lord, I gotta have more. Lord, I gotta have more of you. <clears throat> Lord, I don't care. When we start seeking the Lord for what we can do for him instead of what he can do for us. And then we're gonna go deeper in him. When we meditate upon him, it says meditate day and night. This is not when you're want to. I believe in Ephesians it says, pray without ceasing. That's part of meditating. If we can pray without ceasing, we can meditate day and night. If we're not praying, we're thinking about it. Just sit back and think, how much time you think of things that does you no good? How much you sit back and you think, about Ohio State football. And what the good does that do you? It brings you joy when they win, brings you sorrow when they, especially when they lose Michigan. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, what joy does that really bring you in the long run? This year they might do great, and next year, they might lose every, lose every game, no matter what team it is. <laughs> but you know, when you meditate upon the Lord, that does the soul good. That's when you start to prosper. That's when you can walk up to someone and wrap your arms around them and tell them you love them. That's when you, the Lord can say, I need you. That's when you can really step into your calling. You might be sitting back and going, well, I don't know what my calling is. Well, have you really meditated about what the Lord wants you doing? Have you really been meditating and seeking the Lord what you're supposed to do? Are you, are you just sitting back there waiting? Well, when the bishop wants me to do something, he'll come to me. Yeah, he will, but it's not his job to seek out each and every one of our callings. It's our job, then it's our job to go to the bishops that I need to talk to you. I've been meditating upon the Lord, and this is what he's laid upon my heart. He's got enough to do without that, without seeking what the Lord wants us doing. When we're meditating upon the Lord and we're, we're seeking help for the bishop, Pray for him. That frees him up to do other things. You know, I always thought being a pastor wasn't that hard of a job. They come in, they preach two or three times a week, and that's it. But over the last about 14 years, I have learned different. It's not a 24 hour, seven days a week job. It's a 48 hour a day, 14 days a week job. You never get away from it. When you when it's your day off, when you take a day off, there's still things that is still going through your mind about the church. You're still wondering, is everything okay there? You know the Lord's going to take care of it, and you got other people taking care of it, but yet that is your responsibility. The congregation is your flock. A shepherd doesn't say, you know what, I'm taking the day off, and I, I'm not going to worry about my flock. He's meditating about those. Even if he has harlings coming in and taking care of it, and other shepherds taking care of it, he's still concerned about the flock. He's constantly meditating. We need to be praying for the bishop. We need to be praying for all the leadership of the church. Not only this church, but we need to be going outside these walls. In Psalms 
19:14, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be account acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. Is your meditation in your words acceptable to the Lord? What you're meditating on, is it acceptable? Is the Lord saying, hey, hey, Jason, that's a good job. I'm, I, I'm proud of you. You're meditating on the right things. Or is he saying, man, I wish, I wish Jason would get his, get, get his act together and get, get, meditate on things he needs to be. And that's my strength and my redeemer. The Lord is our strength and our redeemer. He's the one that gives us the strength that we need. And meditating upon him, that's where we get our strength from. We just can't walk through life and not think about him and be praying and have the strength that we need. We come in here for service twice a week and Bible study once. We're here three times a week. And that's not enough to get us through a seven days. But when we're meditating upon the Lord, that gives us the strength to make it one more day. When we get up tomorrow morning and our minds is fastened upon the Lord, that blocks the enemy from coming in and tormenting us the way he does. When we go to the bed tonight and we're meditating upon the Lord and we have prayed a hedge around our minds and we go to we close our eyes uh, uh, talking to the Lord and thanking him and, and just me <clears throat> meditating and then that blocks the enemy from coming in so quick. But when we go to bed and we just lay down and our mind is open for everything, that's an open door for the enemy to come in and torment us the whole night. But when you're meditating upon the Lord, he ain't got a way in. He goes, wait a minute, I better, I better, watch, I better watch Johnny here, man. He, I can't even get into it. I can't even get that man of a nighttime. His mind is on the Lord, and it's hard to get him, but every once in a while, I can slip, slip in a little bit here, a little bit there. But then, man, he gets right back on the Lord, and I, I, I lose another battle. And that's how we win our battles, is meditating upon the Lord. Good. Psalms 1.1, 1, 1, blessed is the man that walketh in the council, is not, not in the council of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of a sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his, but his delight in the law of the Lord, and in, in his, the law doeth, he meditate day and night. When you're meditating, verse two, but, he, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. The law is the word. And in his law doeth he meditate day and night. When we're meditating upon the word, you know, the Bible says that he'll bring all things back to our remembrance. Talking about the word. But how do we get the word in there? By meditating upon it? He ain't going to open your head up and, and pour it in like pouring uh, a water into a, to a glass. We have to put it in there. We do that by meditating upon it. And if we're meditating upon the word day and night, we're not going to be walking in the counsel of the ungodly, or standing in the way of a sinner, or sitting in the seat of the scornful. We're not going to be doing those things because we ain't going to have time to do that. We're going to be praying for them. We're going to be seeking the Lord and saying, Lord, what can I do? Psalms 119 and 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. It is so easy to not to hide the word in our hearts. Because we're too busy doing everything else. We're too busy when we go home this morning before we come back tonight. Going home, getting something to eat. Say, man, I'm tired. I'm going to take a nap. And we get up, well, if I get up at, 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 at church starts at six, if I get up at five, I can freshen up and be out of here and I get to church right up at six o'clock. But we don't spend on that, uh, that time, from the time we leave till we get back with the Lord. 
But when you do, when you go home and you say, you know what? I'm not going to take my nap today. And believe me, I love my naps. I, even when I was growing up, I hate them, but now I love them. And I sit back and think, you know, I missed out on all these naps when I was growing up. I mean, I, I was stupid back then. I'm getting wise now. But when we meditate upon him, upon his word, and we seek his face, it's going to be so much easier not to sin against him. We won't know when the enemy comes in. <coughs> when the enemy starts coming in, we will we'll see the red flag coming up. But we're not meditating upon the word. He will slither in and have us before we know it. The word says that he, he goes about like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. And if we're not meditating, I will be the one that he's devouring. And it will be the one that's not uh, going to make it because we haven't meditated. Uh, we don't know what the word says. Uh, uh, when the false doctrines that's coming around, goes around, uh, I will be born for every one of them. But when you're meditating upon the word and upon the Lord and, the, and somebody comes in and starts telling you something that's contrary to the word, uh, uh, the sirens and everything else will be going off. Brother, you are wrong. This is what the word says. Adios, amigo. I'm out of here. Exit, exit stage right real quick. But that's how the people are getting deceived because they're not meditating. They're not taking the time out of their day to give God the, uh, two minutes of their time when he, when the Lord laid his life down for them. That's right there enough to meditate on the beating that he took and the sacrifice he made. That's enough to meditate on for about 100 years. That somebody loved us enough to do that. When I get thinking about it, I, thought, I think, how can somebody love me that much? That would, that would do that for me. Our soldiers, they die <coughs> for us, for this country, but they get paid for that. They volunteer for that. Our police officers, they die to protect us, but they know when they take the job, that's a risk that they take. But when the Lord did it, he did it voluntarily. He goes, hey, Mike, I love you this month. I'm going to die for you. You are right, man. There's, there's nobody like you, and I love you more than anything. So I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going to lay down here like them dry those nails at my hands and my feet, put that... Grab that crown of thorn upon my head and pierce me in the side. Just for you, Mike. That's how much I love you. But not only Mike, but Ray Sean and every one of us. But we can't take time out of our day to meditate and thank you for that. We want to meditate on everything. And sometimes we have to be, our mind has to be on other things. But we can give him a whole lot more of our time than we do. We can give him more praise than we do. Minister Linda always says, you get out of the service what you put in. If you come in here and you sit there with your arms crossed and said, well, Lord, bless me if you can. Yes, yeah, your blessing right there. Because he's not going to force it upon you. But when you come in here and you're raising your hands and you're praising him and, 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 and you're worshiping him because you love him, he's going to bless you because, because you took the time out of your day for him. You have made the sacrifice to come in and you've got your mind centered upon him. Now we come, we'll come in here, we'll hear this message. But if it's not planted deep down in our soul, in our heart, in our mind, by next week, part of us won't even know what the message was tonight. Because it did not fall upon good soil. But when you're meditating upon Him, that soil, I don't know if anybody's ever gardened or not, you got to go out after you plant the crops. You got to go out and hoe that garden. You got to plow around that whatever you planted to, to get for the water and everything to get into it. And by meditating upon the Lord, that's what you're doing. You're breaking up that fire ground. You're making good soil out of it. That old uh, stony heart, you're breaking it up. 
so the word can get in there and start growing. We need to be meditating. We need to have our mind fixed upon him. We need to, to, to not worry about what's going on around us. Well, you know what? And all the guys at work wants me to go out and have pizza with them after work tonight, but I mean, I really want to go home and spend time with the Lord. If I don't go out, they won't make fun of me. Well, they're going to make fun of you anyhow. Why not give them a good reason to make fun of you? You're being a light. And they're going to say, you know what? Even though we all have Mike to go out and even pay for his dinner, but he wants to go home and spend it with the Lord, there must be something to this. We just want to take him out for a, uh, for a, a blaming young dinner, all the trimmings and everything. And we're going to pay for it. And he's wanting to go home and, and pray and, 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 and read his Bible. You know what? I want to talk to Mike about this deal. Find out exactly what's going on. You're not doing it. Meditate upon the Lord for that. You're doing it to get closer, but yet you can be alive by doing it. And quit making excuses not to do it. Start making excuses to do it. Well, you know what? That's my favorite show, but hey, it'll be back on again. It'll, it'll be a rerun. Oh, you know what? It's beautiful outside. Sun shining, nice. The temperature is perfect. I'm going. You know I'm just going to grab my Bible and I'm going out here and sit under this tree and I'm going to read my Bible and meditate on the Lord. You know what? I don't care. I'm going to. I am going to. to to spend the time with, with you, Lord. You help me. Lord, I want to do it. You know my heart's desire is to spend more time with you, but I need help. When you ask him for the help, he will give it to you. He won't force you. He'll say, hey, Jason, you said to remind you to spend more time with me. Now, how about uh, going in here in the other room and, and, and just talking to me for a little while? Let me talk to you. I got some things I want to tell you. I got some, I got, I got some news for you. I got some things I want you to, to, to know about that, that's getting ready to happen. But, oh Lord, I'll talk to you a little bit later. We get on social media and we stay there for hours. We're watching TV. We're there for hours. I'm going to watch one show. And then I'm going to go and talk to the Lord. I'm going to pray. Three hours later, it's one o'clock in the morning, and I, I, I gotta get to bed. I gotta work tomorrow. But who have you who who have you been serving the last three hours? Who has been your God the last three hours? Isaiah twenty six and three, thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. When we meditate upon the Lord, when our mind is fixed upon Him, and not the storm that's raising or raging around us, He'll keep us in perfect peace. When we're sitting there not knowing which way to turn, to the right or to the left, we don't know what to do, but when our mind is fastened upon the Lord, He'll say, don't worry, Linda, I got your back. I'm gonna take care of this situation. When we get our mind fastened upon the Lord and we're meditating upon Him, our families is going to get saved. When we get our mind fastened upon Him, our finances is going to get fixed. When we start paying our tithes and quit robbing God, our finances is going to get fixed. But we have to be meditating on the Lord. We have to, because there's more scriptures in the Bible about meditating upon the Lord. But those are the ones that the, the Lord highlighted to me. Meditate upon Him day and night. That we don't sin against Him. We don't open the doors of the enemy to come in. When our mind is, you, you take somebody that is in, if Bishop and, and, and Mike is talking, and they're, they're in a deep conversation. You walk up nine times out of ten, they ain't going to realize you're there. Eventually they will. But if you're just standing there, they're going, 
not be paying attention because they're, they're in a serious conversation. But when we get into a deep meditation and serious conversations with the Lord about what He wants, not what we want, we ain't going to be paying to the attention to the, the enemy so much when he comes in and tries to bombard us with everything you know, that's going on. But we have to be meditating. We have to be seeking the Lord. We have to be in His face. Saying, Lord, it's me again. I come to rash you a little bit more. I didn't get enough last time. I, 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 I've got to talk to you. <clears throat> okay, what am I talking about? Well, I don't know. What do you got to say to me now? Only thing I got to say is I love you and I thank you for everything you've done. Now I'm going to shut my mouth up again. Now talk to me. What can I do for you? And he'll say, keep your mind on me. And I'll tell you. When everything is going on in your mind, every care of the world is, is going on, and he speaks to you in a soft, still voice, it's going to drown it out. But when you're meditating upon him and only got him on your mind, he'll say to you, hey, I need you to do this. Hey, you know your friend you haven't talked to in five years that you guys was buddy-buddy? I need you to call him and just tell him that I laid you, him upon your heart and that I love him. That's all I need you to do. And then I'll go from there. Okay, Lord, grab your phone, call him up. How did you hear that? Because you was in meditation with the Lord. You was listening to what he had to say to you. You wasn't let the cares of the world drive, drive, drive it out. So many times the Lord speaks to us and other things drowned him out. You turn music on down low and, and, and somebody speaks to you, it drowns it out. And that's the way we are with the Lord. We got the volume turned down to him and the volume up loud for the world. We got it backwards. When we turn the volume down to the world, no matter what's coming at us, and we turn the volume up to the Lord and we're listening to what he says, He's going to drown out the cares, the heartache, and he's going to comfort us, and he's going to deliver us from the things that's coming at us. So remember, meditate upon the Lord day and night. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do, the, to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. We meditate upon the Lord and what is written in this book. Everything will come in line. The things that we worry about now, we won't be worrying about anymore. The things that gets us down, we'll just step over. He'll bring the high mountains down low and we'll walk around with a smile on our face knowing that we're walking according to the word and we're not listening to what the enemy has to say. If there's anybody here tonight that needs prayer for anything, now is the time to come. I feel the Lord is, is, is done with me. If anybody needs prayer for anything, come on up. Uh, the Lord's here. Hey, this is Pastor Stephen Worley. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you'd like to donate to this ministry, go to ShilohHub.com. Remember to hit the bell for notifications, and we'll see you next time.